Well, it has been a minute and a half. I have just come back from holidays where I single-handedly paved the road to hell with my great intentions to continue uploading videos. In my defense, the Wi-Fi was terrible and the airline lost my work ethic. But I am back and I am sharing my top travel hacks with you so you can make the whole experience a little less horrific. Because I'm pretty sure that at the end of that road that I was talking about paving would be an airport. Horrible places. Here's how to make things a little less stressful. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura from How To Get Your Shit Together and I help you get organized, get motivated and take the stress out of traveling. So anyone who knows me knows that I am not a great flyer. My stomach was not built for sudden changes in altitude. I'm also afraid of water, so boats terrify me. And flying over water, yeah, that's just one big nightmare wrapped up in a horror story. With that in mind, I wanted to share some things that will take a little bit of the trauma out of traveling, whether you are going by land, sea, or air. Here they are. Hack number one, bring Vaseline and saline solution. Bear with me on this one. In any situation where you've got a group of people in a close proximity who are all breathing the same recycled air, the chances of you picking up a bug or two are high. If you easily fall foul of the dreaded plain flu, then rub a little bit of Vaseline or lip balm or some petroleum jelly product um, just under and around your nostrils before you board. That will help to trap dust and pollen and other airborne particles before they can enter into your nose and start irritating your sinuses. It's one of the number one tips that I picked up in all my years of pharmacy management. If you are a hay fever sufferer, especially whether you're traveling or not, try it. Then when you arrive safe and sound, use a saline solution to rinse out your nose and that should help to flush out any germs that were trying to sneak their way in there and hold your immune system to ransom. Vitamin C and zinc are also great supplements for fighting cold symptoms, so it's worth considering taking the recommended doses of those if you do find that you often get sick after traveling. Just remember that vitamin C can take a few weeks to build up in your system, so if you are going to take it, start about six weeks before your trip. Hack number two, wear layers. You can't always easily adjust the heat settings in whatever mode of transport you've chosen, but you can adjust how many layers of insulation you're wearing. Think tank top, under a t-shirt, under a cardigan, topped with a large light scarf. Bonus tip, always carry a pair of socks. When you are going somewhere sunny in particular, the tendency is to wear sandals or flip-flops, but then you get out to sea or up in the air and the feet freeze off you. It's also handy if you're going through an airport that still insists that you remove your shoes. So if you don't want to go barefoot, slip on some socks and you're good to go. Hack number three, wear comfortable clothes. Now is not the time to be breaking in your new jeans or that lovely wool sweater that looks so cozy, but five minutes later is scouring away the top layer of your skin. Go for tried and trusted folks. Hack number four, make a list and bring it with you. Throwing things into a bag last minute is a surefire way to forget something. Give the matter a bit of careful consideration and then bring the list with you so that when you're packing to come home, you won't leave something behind. Fare thee well, phone charger. Hack number five, always pack a change of clothes in your carry-on. Thankfully, an airline has never lost my bag, but it does happen. Happened to my husband last time he was traveling for work. If yours goes walkies, you want to at least have a fresh pair of clothes that you can change into until your luggage is located and returned to you or worst case scenario, until you have a chance to go out and buy some new clothes. If you're traveling with someone and you each have a suitcase and the other person is totally okay with it, then consider mixing your stuff so that each suitcase contains half of each of your belongings. That way, if one of the bags goes missing, you still each have half your stuff. Speaking of missing luggage, hack number six, make your suitcase stand out for the right reasons. Your suitcase should be easily identifiable for two reasons. One, it's much easier to spot and grab as soon as you see it coming around the carousel so that you don't have to wait until it goes all the way around again. And two, opportunists or just tired, inattentive travelers are much less likely to pick up a unique looking bag than they are a plain old black one. 
either buy eye-catching luggage or if you already have a suitcase that's a bit basic looking then tie a bright ribbon around the handle using a secure knot and um, spray paint a stencil onto it whatever then make it as difficult as possible for thieves to take stuff out get yourself a tsa approved lock wrap some bungee cords around it whatever puts as many obstacles as possible between a potential thief and your belongings a lot of airports now will completely encase your luggage in plastic wrap for a small fee it'll only take you a few seconds to cut it off at the other side but a thief isn't going to go to all that trouble Thieves generally have to act quite quickly, so if your luggage poses any problems for them, they're just going to move on to the next one. Hack number seven, make your trip through security as straightforward as possible. You know you're going to have to remove toiletries and that they're going to have to be in a clear plastic bag, so don't bury them at the bottom of your backpack. Get yourself a see-through pouch, pop them all in there, and then put them in a separate compartment or somewhere you can easily reach them. No more rummaging when you've got a queue of people breathing down your neck. You also know you're going to have to remove electronics, so likewise, keep those in a convenient, easy to access place. If you're going to be wearing jewelry, then bring a little pouch or a small baggie so that if you have to remove them, you can stash them in there safe and sound and pop them in your bag. I once had to remove a ring that had been a gift and because it was so small I didn't spot it when I was grabbing my stuff on the other side and I forgot about it and a few minutes later when I remembered it and went back it was long gone. Lesson learned. Hack number eight. Let relevant people and companies know where you're going. A close family member or friend should know exactly where you're staying including the address and contact details but also let your bank, credit card company and post office know that you're going to be out of town. I once had to have emergency dental surgery while I was abroad and then I couldn't pay for my hotel room because my bank, assuming fraud because of the massive payment in a foreign country, had frozen my credit card. It got sorted but it was very stressful and it cost me a small fortune in international phone calls. Your local postal service will be able to put aside any important packages so that they're not sitting on your doorstep for a week or worse, sent back because you weren't available to sign for them. But don't let all and sundry know that you're going to be away. If something happens and your insurance company gets wind that you posted on Facebook that you were going to be out foreign, chances are they will see that as an open invitation to thieves and will void your policy. Hack number nine is to stash some extra cash. Keep a small sum of cash and a spare credit card somewhere separate from your wallet. Public transport and tourist hotspots are rife with pickpockets. And even apart from that, when you're trying to keep track of so many bags, it's so easy to lose sight of one or to put something down and then just completely forget to pick it back up again. I have left half of my grocery shopping behind me in the store because my daughter was distracting me. I mean, I can live a few days without bananas and cereal, but if you are stuck in a strange place with no way to pay for things, that's not ideal. And while you're at it, hack number 10 is to make copies of all of your important documentation and stash them somewhere safe too. Passports, for example, go missing all the time. If it happens to you, it's not going to be a pleasant experience, but if you have copies of your important documentation, it will make the process of sorting everything out a whole lot less stressful. Even snapping pictures of them on your phone is better than nothing. Speaking of snapping pictures, the final hack is to take pictures of helpful information. The first thing I do when I get to the airport car park is to take a picture of exactly where the car is, including the row number or the nearest sign, and also a picture of the shuttle bus stop number. It's also helpful to take a picture of your hotel room door if you're the type of person who forgets their room number and also to take a picture of the front of the hotel and the street sign of where it's located in case you get lost and you're looking for directions but the hotel name is really hard to pronounce. It's also no harm to take pictures of maps. Now, large area maps can be downloaded to your phone before you go, and I would highly recommend that. But think about just local maps. It could just be the map of the resort where you're staying, um, also directions or the opening hours for local tourist attractions or cafes, um, a business card for a local taxi firm, etc. Any helpful information that you think could come in handy. And there you have it. Those are my top 11 tips to take some of the stress out of traveling. Let me know in the comments below what your best travel tips are because soon I will be taking a transatlantic flight. I could use all the help I can get. 
give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. I also have lots of packing tips, so if you're interested in seeing a video on those, let me know. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because I upload new videos every Thursday to help you live a simpler, happier life. If you're on YouTube, the button looks like this and you will find it down there. Until next time, happy trails. Slalom.